There are so many great smartwatches to choose from that one of my most common comments and DMs and just questions in general is which one is the best of the best? What's the best smartwatch you can buy? And that's exactly what we're answering in this video. Today we're gonna to be talking about the top six best smartwatches you can buy in 2021. And why do we choose six? Well, everybody has different needs. Some people prioritize style, some people prioritize fitness tracking accuracy, some people want battery life. So we have six different categories in this video to figure out which is actually the best of the best when it comes to smartwatches. So starting off category number one is the best for battery life. This one's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Secondly is the best fitness tracker. This is going to be a little fitness band. These are generally more affordable, like under $50 sometimes. And honestly, they are starting to have more and more smartwatch features to make them a viable alternative to a smartwatch. Category number three is the best for losing weight or otherwise getting started with fitness tracking. Then category four is kind of the flip side. Anybody who's already pretty healthy and just looking to push it farther, these are the best fitness oriented smartwatches. Category number five is the best hybrid watch where this is going to give you a lot of health analytics, a lot of functionality. Uh, some of them give you NFC payments and at the same time, they're giving you that classic analog watch look, a really nice aesthetic. And then of course the last one, category six, the overall best of the best, the easy recommendation for just in general. If you didn't prioritize anything in one through five and you just wanna know what's the best smartwatch, that's gonna be category number six. On top of that, I'll add bonus category number seven. I'm not allowed to talk much about it yet, uh, but you'll see when, when we get there. So starting off category number one, this is the best battery life. This is not the one day Apple Watch, the five day Garmin, not even a 30 day watch. This one, I've had it for an entire year and I've actually never charged it once. This is the Casio G-Shock GBD H1000, which at first glance, I know what you're thinking, it's just a basic digital watch. It's actually not, it has a lot more under the hood. So this has Bluetooth connectivity, which means you're getting notifications, you're syncing up workouts with your phone, and it also has GPS on here, it has heart rate tracking, has an accelerometer, a barometer, a compass, all types of different sensors on here to give you some pretty in-depth analytics, and it's also very accurate. So how does the battery last that long? Well, if you look on the front, on the outside, you'll see that there actually is a solar panel there, which is recharging this watch as you go. So like I said, I've had this for a whole year. I've never had to charge it once. I don't even know where the charger is. So whenever I'm planning a trip that's off the grid, uh, backpacking, kayaking, something like that, and I don't plan on being around an outlet for a couple days, this is always my go-to. Really a solid pick for the best battery life. That brings us into category number two, which is the best fitness tracker. I mentioned that these are getting better and better every year, and they're becoming a really viable option or alternative to smartwatches. And the winner this year is a very clear one in my opinion, and this is the Xiaomi Mi Band 6. Selling at somewhere around $50, but of course it depends on where you live, you're getting a lot of function, a lot of bang for your buck on this one, where you're getting a very large display on the front. It's also a great quality display, very bright, very vibrant, and the functions on here I mean, it really stacks up to a pretty valuable smartwatch, honestly, from, like I said, music controls to uh, honestly very, very accurate heart rate tracking. But of course, the drawback here is that you don't have GPS, you don't have NFC payments, at least not here in the US. And so anybody looking to track with GPS, you could either run with your phone, as long as your phone's nearby, it's going to use your phone's GPS and, and just pull from that and use it, which is, which is fine. But for anybody looking to use GPS and not run with their phone, the alternative would be to get something like the Fitbit Charge 4. I talked about that a lot last year. It's a little bit more expensive, but on sale, you can still probably find it for around $100. You're getting GPS, you're getting NFC payments, and I mean, it's still a little fitness band. And of course, there are tons of other fitness trackers, and I've reviewed so many on this channel. Uh, but if you guys are interested in learning more about this, or actually any device we talk about in this video, I have a full review of every single one of these. I'll put links in the description below, as well as links to the latest price in case any of them go on sale. And that brings us into category number three, which is the best smartwatch for losing weight or otherwise getting started with tracking your health and your fitness. And really, I wanna differentiate this from the next category because in this category, you probably don't care as much about your VO2 max. You don't really care if it pairs with like a Peloton and a heart rate strap. Really what you want is something that looks nice, works as a smartwatch when, during the day, but at the same time keeps tabs on your health and kind of gamifies it and gives you metrics that make it easier to understand and digest and, and keep you moving in the right direction. And honestly, out of all these brands, the one that does it the best in my opinion is Fitbit. Fitbit is my go-to recommendation for anybody who is looking to lose weight and the Fitbit Sense is really a fantastic device for that. 
So you have all types of analytics on here from uh, heart rate and GPS, of course, but also skin temperature, an ECG, all types of stuff like that. And they kind of break it down and gamify it in a really good way. So rather than looking at exactly what your heart rate level was all the time, they can just give you heart rate zones and let you know like how long you worked out in a fat burning zone, how long you worked out in, in a cardio zone and, and, and where your goal was as well to let you know if you met your goals today or if you didn't get there. And on top of that, with the Fitbit Premium or with Fitbit, the app in general, you are able to connect with other users out there and, and it kind of gamifies it even further. So I found people have a lot of success with devices like this one, but of course the limitation on this one kind of leads us into the next category. The limitation is that the heart rate tracking and the GPS accuracy is not, it's not like world class here. You're not gonna have the best accuracy, but granted, it's typically good enough to know if you're in the right heart rate zone and, and if you're really meet, making progress. And that brings us into category four, which is the best fitness smartwatch. And the emphasis here is on smartwatch because there are other sports watches out there like the Polar Vantage V2 or the Garmin Phoenix watches, which are really geared towards just sports. I'm talking about something that's going to be a well-rounded smartwatch that also really accurately tracks and follows your workouts. And I think the obvious pick here is the Garmin Venue 2. This is actually the 2S right here. The Venue 2 and the 2S are, are nearly identical, just different in size. And it's really a fantastic device. I've been wearing it for a little while and it, not only is it incredibly accurate, but it also gives you a, a lot of insights and a lot of Garmin software on here to help you reach your goals better. And your goals here, again, differentiating this versus the, the previous category, the goals here are going to be like shaving mile time off of a marathon uh, and things of that nature. So Garmin has their own workouts on here. Uh, again, very accurate tracking. They have offline Spotify. And the benefit is that it also works as an everyday smartwatch. You have NFC payments on here, notifications, you can answer reject calls, all types of functions like that. Really an all around great watch to wear. But of course the downside of this one is that the Garmin Venue 2, it's a little bit pricey. You're looking at a, a pretty high price tag on here. And if that is not within your budget, then you could pay half that price or approximately half that price and get the same accuracy or roughly the same accuracy with the Garmin Venue SQ. So that's kind of a runner up in this category where you still have a lot of accuracy, you still have offline Spotify, but you're compromising a little bit on the build quality, the style, uh, and the display quality. Category number five is my personal favorite, and this is the best hybrid watch. I find that I'm wearing hybrid watches more than most other watches on this list because one, they usually have a longer battery life, and two, the big one is that I personally think they look better. And so my pick for this category is actually the Withings Scan Watch. I've been wearing this watch for a while, and I really like the overall build, the design of this, the aesthetic of it, because hybrid watches really focus on aesthetic, this one is going to be my pick for this category. I love how this one works, and it also has some really advanced health analytics on here from heart rate tracking and sleep tracking on the back uh, to an actual ECG on here as well. So you can keep tabs on your heart, and it's a really nice, simple design. You can easily scroll through with a little rotating crown on the right side and track workouts, check out your SpO2, your heart rate, all types of stuff like that. It's really an all around a great watch, but the downside in this one, of course, I always have a runner up because there's always a little catch on these. The catch is that this is not yet FDA approved, which means it's not available in the United States yet. So if you're in the US, you might wanna consider getting my runner up here, which is the Garmin Vivomove Style, or the Vivomove Lux for that matter. These watches look fantastic, and it's made by Garmin, of course, so you're getting a lot of that, that software that I talked about with the Venue and the Venue SQ, and you also have NFC payments. So for some people, you might actually prefer the Garmin Vivomove style. And that brings us into category number six, the best of the best, the overall number one smartwatch. If you didn't prioritize any one thing that I mentioned before, this is going to be my recommendation for you. And no surprise here, it depends on which operating system you have. So we'll start off with the Apple users. If you use an iPhone, the obvious choice here is the Apple Watch 6. It's incredibly powerful, has a fantastic selection of apps, it really works seamlessly and it integrates perfectly with the Apple ecosystem. So really a fantastic and very, very powerful watch. The best overall you can get for an iPhone. But of course, the downside is that you do have to pay a little bit extra for this. It is around $400, possibly more if you want the LTE version. But luckily, Apple thought of this and they came out with a cheaper version. If you don't care about the ECG, if you don't care about an always on display, and if you don't need that more advanced SpO2 tracking for your sleep tracking, then for a lot of people, you would be happier saving the money and getting the Apple Watch SE. Now, for Android users, 
no worries about not having access to an Apple Watch because you have a winner in this category as well. The winner for you is actually the Galaxy Watch 3, which is a fantastic watch on many regards. It really does everything you would want from a smartwatch, and the physical or the external design is really fantastic. I think among the best for any smartwatch out there, where you have this nice rotating bezel to navigate the interface, you also have a nice solid design here. It comes with leather straps, and as far as aesthetics go, I think this watch absolutely crushes many other smartwatches on the market. And so finally, category number seven is a brand new smartwatch that I'm actually not allowed to talk about. It's under embargo, but it's right off camera, right there. It's running the brand new Snapdragon 4100 chip, and it's I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it yet, but it's a really, really great experience at a much more affordable price. So if you guys wanna learn about that one, it's probably gonna be my next smartwatch video I release on this channel. So definitely do click that subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss it when that video comes out. But guys, that's been it. Those are my top six, or honestly, probably more like top 12. They all kind of had a runner up, but those are my picks for the best smartwatches of 2021. And I wanna acknowledge that there are tons of great smartwatches out there from Oppo and Huawei and OnePlus, like a lot of other devices that were not covered in this video. That's not to say they're not great devices. They just weren't my picks based on my own testing and experience for the best smartwatches overall. So you guys can leave a comment. If you've had any experience with these smartwatches or any others, leave a comment below and let me know which one you like best and why. As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien and I'll see you next time.